und die SAR App. Ähm, das sind im Wesentlichen zwei Projekte. There are two projects here by the nerds uh, from Sea-Watch to save lives in the Mediterranean. Uh, the first is the SAR App. To, to help getting uh, resources to and to coordinate them, and Searchwing, which is a drone we use to help find uh, refugees. And I'll uh, try and give you a, an overview of the situation in the cent central Mediterranean. My name is Oben Neugebauer. And I'm a, a customer of Sea Watch. This is a uh, Sea Watch is an organization that does uh, sea rescues. We operate two ships in the middle in the Mediterranean. And we help people survive this dangerous passage. We also try to build political pressure in order to help uh, improve the situation. How does the situation appear? The uh, trip to uh, Europe is difficult, particularly those people who don't have the right papers. People can go through the lot over land or over mountains or over the much more dangerous uh, Mediterranean trip. Uh, what this means, I've given you a couple numbers, I brought a couple numbers along. What does the number 16 mean? One sixteenth is the likelihood that you'll, you'll lose your life uh, when trying to attempt to uh, cross the Mediterranean. When you translate this to the room, if we'd all started the, uh, we'd already have lost, we would have lost uh, 30 people. People think that do people do this willingly, but the, why would they do this, uh, given the numbers? The, the, the uh, numbers are from the Missing Migrants Project. That's a good source for these numbers. Um, over the over this year, the the numbers have, have dropped down to uh, one in forty four. Not quite as dangerous, but still, but it's still an unacceptable risk for us. People aren't. Um, Victims of a of a natural disaster. These are people. Uh, these are a, a man-made disaster. The uh, European the European Union had the capability to end this. They had the capability in their hands. But so long as there's no um, actual organized sea rescue mission, that's something we want to do. And that's why we started this search, this do-it-yourself search and rescue mission. This is uh, Harald Hufno, who's a worker out of Brandenburg. So we want, wanted to ask a question up front. In the entire time of the uh, Berlin, uh, Berlin Wall, 183 people died. But outside the uh, European um, uh, borders in the last week, there's been 300 people who've died. Here, for example, uh, several families from Syria are going on a fully uh, unacceptable uh, old fisherman's boat because there's no other way to come to uh, to Europe. So they've built an old uh, fisher boat, uh, an old fisherman's boat, and then and then rebuilt it into a relatively useful uh, ship. And this is Sea Watch is the name of it. It's not just about um, saving people, but also observe what's happening. This is what we've done from the beginning. Uh, we, we kind of hacked the uh, talk by on this uh, on this talk. 
Und allein für dieses Gesicht vom Schweizer Nationalisten ähm, Köppel war es eigentlich den ganzen Aufwand auch schon wert gewesen. Wir haben trotzdem weitergemacht, wir haben das Schiff aufs Mittelmeer gebracht. So we continued and brought the ship into the Mediterranean. And we can see it here. That's the 12 mile zone. So it's the, um, the radius where, com where countries have influence in the on seawater. And our area of operation is the red escaped one. And we're looking for people in in need of rescue. And this is what we found. On the 7th August of 2015, that was our like, key experience. And we came to our the, the, our the edge of our capabilities. We had 512 uh, people we had to help, and we were just out of our resources. We had a boat which was just drifting on on the sea, and there were people who were not drowning, but they were they were um, they weren't getting enough water, and that's why they were dying. And we kind of we were taken aback that we just didn't find them over three days, even though they were in our area of observation. And uh, so we kind of started a political action with a spreeboot and put um, 128 people from the Bundestag onto this boat to make them feel the, their, poli their politics on their own body. And then we decided to get a new ship that has medical facilities to treat uh, dehydrated people and we need aerial reconnaissance. Um, it can't be that there is a ship drifting for three, d three days and we can't, we can't see it. But there was a second key experience in the beginning, and that was the, our, our effort in the Aegeus on, on, the, on the islands. And that was because lots of people have came together and helped the help the refugees from people who were professionally into that business up to hackers just helping. And the networks that evolved in the Aegeus they helped us in our operations in the Mediterranean and um, Four organizations in Germany followed this, this, our example, and these organizations also sent ships into the Mediterranean, and um, this can be a challenge, these 13 ships which are in the Mediterranean now. Um, must be coordinated, and then we can, we as techies can help there as well. And that's where our app comes into play. Even though we don't have this app in operation quite yet, we were able to save 20,000 people from, um, from drowning or dying, possibly dying in the Mediterranean. To show how this looks like, I will show you a video. This is the situation in August. Um, you see how the how the boat kind of starts to collapse because they're overloaded and the and the the ground plates inside the boat just disintegrated the the plastics and the and the boat just starts to sink now. It was. It was a good fortune that we were on site with our ship and able to save the people. And we were able to give them um, to give them help. But this can be very, very, this can end very, very differently. Uh, you can also see that we were to, together with the second organization, um, it was the organization Jugend Rettet, and they were there with their ship Juventa. Uh, they took on board 400 people that day. We see the cooperation or the, the coordination generally works, um, and you s here there's a new post. Um, where they again save 100 people from, from the Mediterranean. 
2016 has been the most deadly year in in our history. Uh, this is our colleague Martin, um, who has recovered a died baby. Uh, all in all, 5,000 people or above 5,000 people have died in the Mediterranean or and the borders of the European Union. If we want to solve this problem, it's not going to be um, it's not going to be that easy. And the European Union has the capability of doing this. There is not even there is only one European piece of legislation, and that's from 2001, and that says that the trans the companies that are transferring the people are doing the are doing the um, the registration, but this is politically not quite possible yet. Therefore, um, the European Union is not likely to to open up legal ways of immigration. And so we're thinking, we're wondering what we can do, and wondering what we can what we can help. So we're back with aerial reconnaissance. Uh, we started a try. Uh, we bought a ultra lightweight aircraft um, and we flew it down to the uh, to Tunis and we had a few very very um, productive we had a very productive few days and we actually found lots of boats but the official um, the officials down there reject reject or uh, retracted our our allowance to travel through their airspace and that just shows that it's not that it's not able to do this and it's politically not wanted that there's a civil eye watching what happens on the coast of Tunis and therefore this hasn't worked until now so this is our method of reconnaissance a primary method of reconnaissance. And you can picture that if it's a small boat on the horizon, it's practically impossible to see it. The, the other thing is that there's the Libyan Coast Guard is pushing us back and we are that we are violating different rights of the Libyan of the Libyan sea space and therefore they're intervening in our rescue missions and this is something which happens and this is very very important to document these kind of incidents and there's another problem that we have uh, we are we are the another problem we have is that we're visible for a far distance and um, it's good on the one hand that they can find us and they, they can come towards us and that we can help them but the problem is that um, we have that we have that we can rescue them but we are quickly at the end of our capabilities and we can kind of know which one is a higher priority to to rescue or which is the other therefore um, therefore we said we need help and that's what we need um, quite pragmatically we have two projects one is search wing we have a drone a model aircraft which is equipped with cameras and which is helping us to find the boats um, in time and the other um, way of the other project is the SAR app, which helps us coordinate the ships um, and con and gathers the, all the information needed to assess the situation. That's why I'm passing on to my colleague. So we had the situation when we started what, what, uh, working with Sea-Watch just within the last year uh, around 12 organizations started, started working um, 
to try to help and rescue refugees from the Mediterranean. Um, so we are now in need to coordinate which ship is going to rescue which um, boat of refugees. So we had the idea for this app to coordinate this. Haben halt angefangen, eine zentrale Struktur zu schaffen. So, we had this idea for this coordination app, where we had one central structure where incidents could be reported to. And then after a boat has been reported, we could coordinate which rescue ship would be allocated to this boat. So, it's a coordination system where all the rescue boats um, are registered within, so also, and then also all the rescue, um, all the boats in need of rescue are also reported to this app. So all the, all the NGOs um, see where um, all the rescue boats are going and also where the refugee boats are going. And also the coast rescue um, has access to it, uh, so everyone knows what's going on at the same time. So here we see how this looks like. So this is a map view and we also have a view for uh, where there are the cases. On the left there are different kinds of filters. Um, on the left there is like um, a, a system where you can see how urgent the situation a boat is in. and. Also, you have uh, an option where you can see the rescue boats and see which one is online or which one is currently not uh, working. And you can also see if a ship entered in a new case of a rescue. And here is a case overview. So here you can see all the cases which are currently reported. And well, that's basically about it. Genau, und dann ist es halt so, um, dass wir das Ganze halt im Wesentlichen zu zweit gemacht haben. So, until now we have been working on this uh, on our own, the two of us. So, we have started a prototype, which is working currently, but we are in need of help. And we are hoping um, for your help. We are hoping you can help us with the security concept. We have a centralized system, um, which might be good to decentralize this. And also we are looking for geo-hackers and people are knowledgeable about this and like any other ideas which could help us to um, make this app better and faster. Okay. Mikros an, ja? Gut. Was denn? Ja, ich habe ja ein Mikro hier. Also, hallo erstmal auch von uns, äh, Bento. Hallo, everyone. Bento und Stani. Tausend Dank an Sea-Watch. Sea Watch. It's an incredible work that they're doing. Oh, lots of applause. Und an der Stelle nochmal in Richtung der europäischen Verantwortlichen, der Regierung, der Politiker in Europa und in Deutschland, schämt euch. And the uh, lack of responsibility of the European uh, Union and the government, sir, is a massive shame. So. Ähm, wir äh, haben über Freunde, über Bekannte davon, äh, wir kennen das Projekt. We've uh, known about this uh, Sea-Watch project. Gab, insbesondere als es darum ging. Sehr viele Flüchtlinge von der Lot, nach Lesbos, uh, wollten, lots of, uh, uh, lots of uh, refugees from Turkey to Lesbos attempted to make the, the trip, and that's where we, the idea came that we can help with uh, technical, uh, uh, technical things help, help, such as a quadrocopter. But this isn't really, it wasn't enough for the right range, and so then we thought about 
about what are some other things we could do that could help. How could we watch over a little bit of the coastal sea so it could actually help someone before they, they uh, so we could save them before they drown. That was the, the whole idea of a, of a drone watch. We, we wanted to make something that actually helped. And that's where we thought we wanted to engage ourselves. And that's what we've done really happily to save people. So we considered what we needed to do. So, so the problem with the, 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 the plane overwatch is pretty hard due to uh, border issues and legal issues. And here's an example of, of one NGO drone on the far right. Um, but these, this, this is an example of one costs like a half million euros. But that's not something we can uh, do. Uh, maybe if we get 10, uh, 10 euros from 150,000 people, but that's probably not possible. How can we get, we really wondered how can you get this as cheaply as possible? Um, something that was uh, okay to lose. So we thought, what are some of the scenarios how to be used? So the first scenario, I only wanted to see if there's something beyond the horizon. That was the first scenario. Is there a boat beyond the horizon that needed to be saved, potentially? Auf so einem Schiff halt so Radarechos. So ein Radar reicht, weiß ich nicht, zehn Seemeilen weit. Das ist irgendwie so. So, due to, because sometimes radar limitations couldn't get much more than 15 kilometers away. Could we send something perhaps an hour or two away? Das wäre doch einfach mal. Und dann ist man hingefahren und hat gesehen, okay, das ist jetzt leider nur ein Segelboot oder leider nur ein. Just to, to be able to see when you've spotted something at a distance with radar, can we see is it a sailboat or some sort of fisherman boat or something? Also haben wir uns gedacht. Um, that we thought that a uh, drone would also be the, the sort of the second scenario is that could we see to see something and identify it after a radar detection. So the uh, idea was that we create this uh, this the small uh, the small drone. We just throw it in the area. Uh, be, be thrown into the air and be remotely controlled. And we thought it would um, look a little different uh, along the coast of Lesbos. Um, and, we th and we thought we would also there could use uh, IR cameras, find people in the water. And then the uh, that that was our first scenario. But then the Turkey made the deal with the EU, which meant that all of a sudden that wasn't a high risk transit zone anymore. So that's why we thought for the smaller one uh, was a more ideal for a for a ship launch and ship landing. It's because uh, it's a little harder to land on a ship, so we needed the the small one. And then we this this thought was that we could also uh, really uh, increase the radius that the Sea Watch could see, so they could, but that it would still come back to the ship. And so you can see uh, that the this uh, this was our recommendation for the the. Uh, um, must for the longer range uh, so, second scenario for maintaining an overwatch uh, at the around the ship to increase the 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 range, and so we had a bit of a learning curve. So we started out this way. We built uh, the yes, and we found out that some people were doing long distance FPV. And we, they built in a camera into the into the aircraft, and then they just put a lot of batteries into the into the aircraft, and they came like had ranges of 200 kilometers, and they posted very boring videos on the internet. And then 50 percent the, in those videos, 50 percent of the time, you just see you just see like. Water, so yeah. So for like 200 euros, you can get the the model and um, the engines and like the electronics. 
<laughs> yeah, so we started sticking stuff together and learned, well, this is not that trivial as we thought. And so it was a bit, it's a bit more difficult. Uh, Bento had a model pilot because I'm not one. And yeah, they were, we, we met people as we did, as we did a presentation on that. And he said, yeah, of course I can help because I build these things and f can fly them for a long time. So it's, because if you can't fly them, it's difficult to test them. So we started our first experiments and yeah, this is our learn curve, pretty literally. This was our first uh, endurance test and we wanted to see how how long it can fly and we said okay we'll just let it run circles above our airfield until the aircraft said it's it's gonna it's gonna be empty so we stand there it was raining and we the aircraft was doing its circles and at one point it just <laughs> at the in the 51th turn it just decides to do something different and then and it nearly and it came down just like just over the over the rims of the forest so um, yeah and then it came down there so we had a bit more learning curve uh, and we noticed that Eitelkeit and Posertum just doesn't help with such a project. Uh, and we, we wanted to like do a low flight skimming and want to do like a bit of posing. And so, yeah, we noticed that there was a conflict in the software. And yeah, there was a bug in the software that, yeah, part of the software in this specific situation, this, um, the software just did something unexpected and uh, went into it went into a tree and for every one of these tr errors we have <laughs> we have a we have a taped taped the plane for that so we have multiple videos to show you yeah we supposedly had a video i pressed on play hilfe <laughs> help oh, they're all gone Du, die Videos sind alle weg. Das ist auch Teil der Lernkurve übrigens. Das ist auch Teil der Lernkurve. Aber ja. Ah ja, ah ja. Sehr schön. Genau. Das ist ein wichtiger Teil unserer Lernkurve. Man sieht es auch. Er fliegt eine Kurve und zwar fliegt. Well, this is an important part of our learning curve. This is a. This is the first curve. It is flying completely autonomously. Genau, genau. And the second time. The second time. Yeah. So the cameraman was standing un under the first curve. That's an important info. And yeah. So the question was, if we can do that again. Let's just, just don't move. It'll, it'll work. Just don't get out of the way of it. And. <laughs> Yeah, it worked. It came back and landed right in front of our feet. So this. So we do have like kind of tasks, and this is the second one. It was like land in the net, and it just didn't. And this is the second attempt, and it didn't. And the ship is normally moving on top of that, so. So there's nothing that can go wrong. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? So hey, it's just styrofoam, so you can glue it together. So now you can see the small aircraft in action. And yeah, and actually, at one point, it just starts working. So you actually are possible. 
It's cap it's cap you're capable of landing it inside a net. Another problem is to find the net, but that's a, something different. But the net landing isn't, isn't carved in stone, and there's other... And we're, we're open for suggestions how to catch a drone with a minimum speed on a moving target. So, yeah. And there's the concept of... <laughs> there is a... <laughs> there has a trail... <laughs> It trails away on a rope, and then the rope just is caught um, by a caught by a rod. So the minimal velocity for these things is about 50 meters per second. So if we're landing against the wind, so our relative speed, if we're flying into the wind, if we're landing into wind, is slower. But we're having to deal with turbulences created by the wind hitting the ship, and then. We are, we're, we're in a turbulent spot behind the ship, and therefore we have to fly with a higher speed, and, and yeah. On this point, I want to say a friendly hello to the ETH Zürich, which is, unfortunately, doesn't have a time for us, because it, because they need to start their commercial, commercial production, and the the ETH Zurich can, can build tail sitter, which then essentially hovers hanging on the propellers and land them on its tail. And we saw and we found it really cool. And it has a lot to do with a lot of partial differential equations, which is pretty complicated to um, solve. But the proof is brought, the proof is, proof is made that we can, it's possible. They're not saying how, and they're saying that they would quite like to help us. Um, but we would quite like to know how they're doing it, and therefore... Natürlich kann man das leicht lösen. Man nimmt eine Copter Software und eine Plane Software. Und yeah, wenn die Plane Software senkrecht liegt, dann schaltet man die Plane Software aus. Uh, yeah, we have the we have the idea of just like combining a copter with a aircraft. And and yeah, it's we're that we're switching the software from an aircraft mode into a copter mode when the aircraft is in a vertical climb. And actually, it is it is done that way, and even though it's a bit strange. Um, but the ATL Zurich did it in one software solution, and we would quite like to we would quite like to know how they did that. So help is appreciated. So why aren't you not landing on water and you're... And then we have to, they just like, pick up the aircraft. And the simple solution is we have to let out a boat and then pick it up. And worst case scenario, we are actually going to do that. Um, and one of the questions we had was how to get the thing waterproof. And because salt water is a... Mm. How to get a thing waterproof. And we found rubber. Um, that you can, we can found that we found rubber that you can in, encapsulate the electronics in to get the electronics watertight. But um, this is plan C, the last option. Because if like the drone like if the drone like flies into the net and rebounds and lands in the water, we want to pick up the drone and hope that it still works. Uh, the idea was that we also uh, the, we wanted to include a Zat modem, but the Zat modem was more important, more expensive than the entire than the entire drone. So one, one day of aircraft operation costs like 700 euros, so technically for that money we can throw away like three aircraft. <laughs> a proper aircraft throwing it away and that's like... <laughs> that was the aircraft launch and the autonomous aircraft which then... 
we had to take control of, so that was a flight into the woods, quite literally. Always these, always these trees that randomly appear in your flight path. <laughs> Modern technology of presentation. <laughs> That's how it looks like. The video was the 23rd December. And um, yeah, this morning the aircraft still looked exactly like that. And styrofoam, you can still glue it together. Yeah, we actually wanted to show something, so... We want to show you which kind of decisions we did, we took, while building it. And there's different software stacks that operate those. There are different hardware solutions for those, for, for our... For our use case, because a lot of the a lot of the technology for the drones is export controlled because it comes from the U.S. Uh, because it's theoretically a microcontroller with just a standard bunch of sensors, um, which is then wrapped in a bit of software. Um, but the US obviously classifies this as a weapon, so... And all these, all these small sensors you can buy for your Arduinos on, break on breakout boards. And we're momentarily using the Pixhawk. It actually has this problem that it's... Um, that you can have to leave your name and a, a position of a number of documents. Um, so we thought, yeah, we're real hackers, we're going to do it on Linux. So we're going to use a Raspberry Pi or something similar. And we're going to use that and put a real-time kernel on top of that. And then let the Ardu pilot software run inside that because we're at the moment we can let it run on this system and because we don't, don't only want to have the claims we want to show you the video and yeah obviously it seems like it doesn't work and there's there's a from a vendor in Spain. There's a small board. There's it's designed as a shield for the Raspberry, the Raspberry Zero, and the Raspberry is costs like five quid. As a small board, and there's an ARM U, ARM CPU on it, and it has two USB ports. And for example, this board you have a sensor shield where people do quadrocopter hacking with. And there's a gyroscope on it, there's a pressure sensor on it that you can attach a GPS module to it. And it's they're also, they're also shipping it with a special Linux distribution which you have to register to download and essentially it, it's, it's, used for, it's used for copters and they've got two videos from their many which are the, where they're using it for aircraft and um, if we, yeah, we essentially notice that if we compile ourselves at sex faults and yeah, the, the signaling on the CPU just has latencies we can't we can't control and everything everything comes and everything starts jittering and even though we didn't do anything, so we're not as far as. We're not as far as that yet, but we're we're sure that this is doable. So we have thought of a few challenges that we want to talk to you about. 
and we think um, it's reasonable that it's doable on a on a real Linux real-time operating system. So we think it makes sense to uh, develop our own sensor board to put on a Linux PC. Um, or maybe we could also find a very tiny processor to put on the sensor board. We don't really care which way around. So this would be one of the challenges. And the second core challenge, well, a third core challenge, uh, apart from landing and into this net, and also like how to find the, like for the net, how to find the center of this net, how do we calculate it? So if we take the edges of the net and like then give it, give it to the drone, and it should be following this, this coordinates which, with all the waves and stuff, and is landing in the net in the end, so we are still working on this. And our search and probably most interesting challenge is um, the um, how to transmit the data from the drone to the ship, actually, so that the Z-Watch can actually use it. So we have tried to um, sub transmit video with an analog system, and with infrared, and maybe then there is someone sitting in front of a monitor for two hours where nothing is happening, which is completely empty, hoping for something um, to just come along quite quickly, which you might, which might have been someone you should have to rescue. So um, yeah, that doesn't really work. So for the small one, um, we are, we think that might be working. But for the big one, um, we have thought about something something different. It should be flying in quite a high altitude, and it's again about being really cheap. Uh, and standard technology, standard transmission technology, well, we thought that would be Wi-Fi, so that, that would be cheap for like quite little money, so we are in international waters, so no one should, uh, could be, should be able to do any harm to a Wi-Fi transmission. So, and then comes on the ship, we have thought, there are these nice telco segment antennas, 60 degrees. So, on the ship, we were thinking about having a telco antenna, which um, we can put inside, into a circle, so with small raspies and then transmission, and we, we are doing uh, software diversity and doing a Wi-Fi broadcast. So, anyone who has done anything about Wi-Fi broadcast, like not only know what it is, but has seriously worked with it, um, we could really need some help because we are still having quite a lot of difficulties with this. Monitoring channel and bläst da Daten drauf. Then is this actually a funk module fertig? Die Daten kommen auf der anderen Seite raus, nur sind die halt stark fehlerbehaftet. So if you just blast data, data it did, well, the data is still coming out on the other side, but there is a lot of errors coming out. So we need a better protocol which works good for this. We want to um, fly in a quite high altitude and uh, put, take pictures um, of the sea and on the sea watch. Um, I, just a couple minutes later, someone can look at these pictures and analyze if they can see anything on this picture. So this is an area we need and where we need help. So it doesn't really have to be Wi-Fi, but it has to be something, something, it can be something else if you have a better idea. Um, Geschichten, solange das nicht in irgendwie innerhalb äh, von wie 15 Euro äh, Hardware äh, abzubilden so geht. So, it shouldn't be more than maybe 15 euros of hardware, because otherwise we can't use it. It, it might be better, but we want off-the-shelf hardware, which is really cheap. And the next problem is um, to take pictures from above, and we need high-resolution consumer cameras, which have 10 to 12 megapixel, and um, just a short while ago, that was very easy, but right now, 
We can't find any consumer camera which I can control from Linux remotely and get the picture in the end on my computer. The most similar thing we found was a Sony camera, which only has the interface of Wi-Fi. So this is developed to uh, be paired with a smartphone. And <laughs> this is quite complicated. If we have a very strong Wi-Fi next to it, this isn't going to work. So we have this antenna from the Raspberry to um, pull a string around it. We don't know. It's kind of an interface. So we have this camera. If anyone feels capable to work with this camera, which might not need connection via Wi-Fi, that would be super cool. Um, you can hack on it. If it, it doesn't matter if it breaks, if you break it, if we, uh, if it helps uh, to develop something that works, that's fine. Uh, do we have another challenge? Well, maybe a ground station. The ground station is not really a challenge. Maybe a few words about it. Sorry, Leute, that's Schrott. So all the software you have for the Grand Station is just crap. The best thing we found is Python. Poo Mafutil. Uh, so just talk Mufflink. Mufflink's awesome. That's the protocol we can talk to the drones. That's what the Grand Stations use to talk to the drones. With this pseudo shell, we can. We can do more than the ground station can do. So, yeah. we want to build an own grand, an, a, a, our own ground station with this shell. So, yeah. what we want to do is like we get an X or Y coordinate from the radar. We turn it, we dial it into our system. We just throw it off, and it goes and it does stuff. So, we do have another video. Yes. We can show you how that looks from above. So, genau, da haben wir halt so yeah, this is, is the, the camera is just attached with with, with tape. So yeah, that's how it looks from a from our standard test flight. This is the perspective. Um, we can see. D details on the water surface. That's how it should look. This is about 300 meters. Genau. Und, um, um, <laughs> So these are the, our upcoming milestones. We have now 100 kilometers of range with this with one of the batteries. But there are two in that. So we can. We are thinking that we can double the the range. Ja, 100 Kilometer weit fliegen und die anderen 100 Kilometer als Reserve benutzen, damit so we're we're thinking that we're using 100 kilometers as operational range and the 100 kilometers as reserve for like wind and other other stuff. So we want to develop software to help all of these organizations that want to save lives and improve the life of humans in need, which is wholesomely used for these for these purposes. So we're working on a at a license, which then. The, which then prohibits the use for the software in military or non-human applications. Yeah. We have one video we still still remains. I want to show that it was fun. This is from our workshop. Thank <laughs> you. 
Genau. Das ist jetzt leider ohne Ton. Da müsst ihr euch so einen schönen, leichten Walzer dazu denken. <lacht> <lacht> Sally, this is without background, so I think that it has a nice waltz in the background. But until now, it was terribly fun. Even though of even even with the challenges we faced, we learned we we learned really really much things doing this project, and we're asking for your support. Help us. Um, help us develop this software into something usable for Sea Watch and other organizations to help people. And um, yeah, thank you. Okay. Downstairs, we have in the hack center, we do have uh, close to the bar, we have an assembly. Uh, we're happy if you come along. Uh, and talk to us, talk to Sea Watch. Um, give us cool hardware and or show us in the pointers in the direction of it. Um, we can we can think of situations that we can three D print them and that three D printed models actually fly. And we're open for everything. Um, all of the ideas that you have. Also, what the Grand Station is concerned, we want to have. Mm. Help us make the code nicer that it doesn't segfold all the time. So, yeah. And um, yeah, we want to hang the aircraft under the ceiling so you see where we are. So, yeah. So we still have 10 minutes for questions. Please stand by the microphones. Yes. Hello. Question. Two points of information for you. Have you thought of LoRa for the for the transmit? For the transmit receive um, we can for on that long range we can transmit not video data but like asynchronously um, for the long range and also can you can't you use deep learning for recognition of boats on seawater? So, so essentially, we probably want to do that on the aircraft. Therefore, we want we need enough CPU power on the aircraft to do the recognition of the of the boats. But the first priority is video transmission. To your first comment, we haven't heard of it. We haven't heard of that technology. And as we already said, we have the requirement that the hardware is not allowed to be. That means we have. Go mal davon aus, a nominal entfernung zwischen Schiff and Flugzeug. We do have bandwidth requirements, uh, and we have a normal. A, a distance between the ship and the aircraft of 3 to your 40 kilometers. And we want to transmit 2 megabytes per minute. If it's possible with that, and if it's, if it's possible for less than 20 euros, then let us talk about it. And, um, yeah, but if you, if you can, if you can determine what is just water and what is not, and, um, yeah. come, let's come back to our milestones. Um, we want, in March, we want to put our first pilot into, into practice. Um, because there are humans dying out there, so we have to get going. 
we're going to do something that works now and it can get better, but... Um, so we think um, Wi-Fi is the best course of action for this immediate time. Questions from the internet? No. Um, Ihr habt gesagt, ihr braucht noch eine Möglichkeit äh, oder eine Alternative für euer Netz. Äh, uh, you said you need a Schutzhosen, Schnittschutzhosen äh, gegen Kettensägenunfälle. You said you need a ja, alternate also form ja, of Hosen, die sind gefüttert mit langen äh, Nylonstreifen, ja. die sobald die Säge rankommt, sich drum rumwickeln und die stoppen. Ja. Vielleicht könnte das auch eine Möglichkeit sein, um die Drohnen quasi mit einem relativ leichten Material in der Luft zu fangen, weil sich ja, der gut, Propeller Prinzipiell nicht anders als so, ein yeah. um, use these use this nylon strips to entangle the propellers and then use that to do that. But essentially this is just a net. Uh, I've also got a question for the net, net landing. So you said you want to calculate the point, the center of the net over GPS. Have you thought of about doing that optically. <laughs> we thought of letting an IR... We thought of an IR LED blinking and just track that. also am Netz anbringen und dann das Flugzeug remote genau in die Mitte steuern und die We thought of mounting cameras on the ship and then just kann man sehr präzise das Flugzeug auch remote controllen und darüber sozusagen vom Yeah, it's possible of controlling the aircraft uh, pretty well over this map up link so we're going to use then cameras on the We can use that on the ship to target the aircraft into the net. Wer jetzt? Ja, du. Okay, äh, vielen Dank erstmal euch allen, also mit der Sea-Watch sowieso, mit der grundsätzlichen Aktion, mit der App und mit der Drohne. So, thanks for ähm, all your effort for the app and with the drones. Ähm, um, thank you for that effort. Ihr habt ja sehr konkrete Anforderungen und you have Zeit very, plan, um das an Leute zu You have very hard requirements and a very tough time plan. Zack, 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 das genau. stehen so, hat, do you have a website where you have... Würde ich gerne teilen. A website with the expertise you need. We've got our website answer. We've got our website searchwing.org. Um, it's hashtag searchwing. Next thing we want, so we're just waiting for the Congress to finish and then we want to carry together what still need to be done. So come to our website and yeah, you can see what we published there. Next question. For me, a quite important question, uh, the f altitude you're wanted flying at, so at the height of one kilometer, you have to take care for of anti-collision with other aircraft. There's a panel übertragen, wo wir unseren Livestream haben, da können wir die And our solution for that problem is we're just gonna we're just gonna broadcast the position of the aircraft um, to other organizations and then this is something we can just Luftraum. Wir fliegen auch jetzt nicht auf Höhe von Verkehrs Luftverkehrswegen. And what we essentially we don't need this transmitter then. And we're flying it over international waters and we Flieger sichtbar macht, so dass die 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 Helikopterpiloten, wenn die auf der Höhe fliegen, fliegen ja auch nur nach Sichtflugregeln. Essentially, keinesfalls vorgeschrieben, auch bei bei Ultraleichtfliegern zum Beispiel einen Transponder an Bord zu haben. It's not. We're in we're in international airspace, so it's. Aber bedenken wir auch, dass das ganze Fluggerät mit allem doch gut unter fünf Kilo bleibt. Es ist also so just, tatsächlich, es, es oh passt sogar in die Regularien für Modellflugzeuge rein. Ja, so we're ist, äh, over international waters and we, we're not, Vögel, die sind schwerer und gefährlicher. We're not thinking of collision, anti-collision systems quite yet, because there are also birds that are, that are heavier than ours. Nein. One, one question from the internet. Yes. 
Habt ihr vom äh, Projekt Marvin von der TU Berlin gehört? Have you heard of Project ja. Marvin from TU Berlin? Gut. <lacht> yes. Good. Ja, so weit, soweit ich weiß, ist das aber nicht, nicht mehr wirklich aktuell. So I don't think this is actually an actual working, uh, working product. Uh, or am I wrong about that? And the response is actually it started in 2013. And, the, uh, and the, the scenario they're working on is very similar. And uh, maybe you can use some of their algor algorithms that they're using. Um, but things have changed a lot, so perhaps uh, this doesn't apply. Um, we're actually more interested on uh, actual uh, capabilities, uh, and particularly ETH Zurich, uh, with an underline, they could possibly do this. And the last question. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Yes. Hi. Um, ich mich vor Jahren, uh, mit I've worked with digital photography for a few years, yeah. and then there's a lot of different digital digital uh, camera firmwares exist, and there's some that are open that we could use. And, and there is something called CEDK, which unfortunately doesn't work with mo most modern cameras. There are some uh, uh, cameras for uh, some software for reflex cameras, but we don't have that. Lots of applause. Thank you. And thanks again for listening. Uh, please give feedback on the translation to hashtag C3T. That's